Hey guys, this is Kirk from Go Make Music, and today we are starting a series called The Foundations of EQ. In this series, we're going to explore the 10 octaves of human hearing. We're also going to go through the different types of EQs and their parameters. And then finally, we're going to look at the philosophy and application of EQ for music making. All right, let's get started. Humans can hear from 20 hertz all the way up to 20k which is 20,000 hertz, that's what the K means. And each of these parts of the frequency spectrum are divided into 10 octaves, and each octave kind of has its own name, its own range, its own unique characteristics. Uh, there are certain instruments that live in some of these ranges. So if you can get familiar with these ranges and what happens there, then you can go a long way into developing your ear and your taste for EQ. Now I will say not to get too nerdy about the exact numbers, but to really understand the ranges and the sonic qualities of each range. All right, so let's get started. What I'm going to do first is play pink noise and then just scroll through the center frequencies of each range so you can just listen to the difference. I'm going to start at 31 and then I'm gonna move up through each individual range. Here comes the pink noise. And here comes the first one, 31 hertz. This is the bottom end. Sixty two. Twenty five, two fifty, five hundred. One K or one thousand two K two thousand four K Eight K, sixteen K, all right. So just going through there, you can see there's a huge difference in the texture of each range. Now let's try to listen to these ranges in a musical context and see what's happening. This is some hip hop first, and we're going to go back down to 31 hertz. Turn it off first. You can already tell it's it's the underside of the kick. It's the real boomy part of the kick. And in hip hop, you got a lot of that too. So let's see what happens when we go to 61. Get a lot more of the tone of the kick versus 30 back. It's the underside of the kick, beneath the kick. And 61. Right. Then we go to 125, it's going to be the top of the kick. Okay, let's try 
250. Okay. You hear the bottom of the keys. The pads. So this is a lot honkier is kind of the word people say, honk, like a horn. One K. The guitar comes out. Parts of the drums. His vocals. More of the crunch of the snares are there. Let's go to 4K. The hi-hats. It's almost like the mid-range of the hi-hats is up there. Let's do 8K. This is like the top or middle of the hi-hats. There's some air and sizzle coming in there. And then let's listen to 16, 16K. There's not a lot of stuff up there actually. So it's a pretty dark mix, which is fine. All right, so that's hip hop. Let's listen to some R&B. Again, underside of the kick. Let's listen to the 60, 62. Again, don't be nerdy about the numbers. A lot more, lot more power of the kick is there in 60. And that's just the underside of it. So... There is some bass there too, but when we go to 124, 125, we're gonna get a lot more bass. Okay, so you can hear there's a lot more kick in 61 and a lot more bass in 125. Let's try 250. Kind of that's like the top of the top of the bass, um, upper bass. Let's try 500. Get the horns coming out, some of the vocals, keys. There's a lot of stuff that lives there. So that's one of the ranges and 250 that you really have to be careful with your arrangement. Let's try 1K. Getting some of the claps, vocals, part of the horn. More edge. Parts of the hi-hat, mostly the claps and top of the snare. This is all the percussion hi-hats. Some of the sizzle of the horns. Cymbals, crashes. All right, 16K. The very top of the hi-hats. All right. Let's listen to some pop and see what we got there. Start at 31. Yep, the bottom side of the kick. 
a lot of the bass, power of the kick. Let's try 125. So that on this one, we have the bass and the kick kind of in the same place. So there's probably some ducking going on. And then in here, in the 124, we got a little bit more of the kick is actually, the upper kick is up here. So that again. All right, 250. The bottom of the guitar. So we have a lot of the guitar is in that 500 range. 1K. Ooh. So a lot of the bite of the guitar is in that 1K range. This is some of the definition of the percussion, top of the guitar. 4K. Again, a lot of the percussion. There's a sizzle. Then let's go to 16. Pretty smooth up there. All right, so now let's go to folk. We'll spend a little bit of time here. Start 31. All right, that's under the kick. That's that sub, 62. A lot of the kick and the bass. 25. I'm actually hearing a lot of the low end of the snare. Okay, let's try 250. A lot of the piano is coming out there. 500, probably more piano guitar. A lot of the piano right there. All right, one, K. More the top end of guitars. UK. Some of the definition of the guitars. 4K. And again, again, a lot of presence is there. Our eight K. A lot of sizzle. All right, and then finally, let's go to 16K. Top end of the perk. All 
All right, way to go hanging on listening to all this music. What I want you to do is pull in your own mixes or pull in mixes that you love by other producers, mix engineers, artists. Pull them into your DAW and do this exact experiment. Go through the center frequency ranges and pay attention to what instruments are living in each of those spaces. And that's going to give you a kind of a little quick reference on what things need to be in which places. And you're also going to notice that things change wildly from song to song, from genre to genre, and different styles of music. The thing I want you to concentrate on is how the different frequency ranges work with each other and balance with each other. So I hope this has been really helpful for you. I hope it's been an ear-opening experience. What I want you to do is go ahead and grab the Foundations of EQ Reference Guide. You can get it here on this end card, the link in the description, or at the website, gomakemusic.org. Just click on the free resources tab and go to the Foundations of EQ course, and you'll see it right there. You can grab it up, print it out, put it on your desk, and use it when you are applying EQ or just trying to think about what something might need in your mix. All right. Feel free to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell on the notifications button and you can get more tutorials every week. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. Until next time, go make music.